Yeah, Diva YouTube, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Melissa Marie, aka Student Nurse Mel. So this video today is, of course, the long-awaited recap video. I am done my uh, third session at Chamberlain. Yes, my third session. Well, I'll be done tomorrow when I take my final for patho, but basically I am done. It has been dramatic, but honestly, when has it not been dramatic? So for starters, I do want to say that in a previous video or two previous videos, I talked to you about the way that Chamberlain does their examinations. And I honestly don't know if this is just for COVID or if this is how it always is, but there is Lockdown Browser and there's also Proctorio. Now Proctorio is a whole nother system, but it's a system that is a part of the ATI online website. So I talked very briefly about ATI. ATI is just a system that we use for NCLEX preparation purposes. They have a lot of study material and a lot of different like supplemental assignments and stuff that we will have to do for our program, but there'll be an ATI and through ATI, written by ATI, etc. So with Proctorio, the examinations come from ATI and they are, in my opinion, they're easier than the lockdown browser exams. Not that they're easier, but they're a lot more intuitive. You could just figure it out. Versus with the lockdown browser, you had to more, more so you had to be like know the information. So with this session, we use lockdown browser only for quizzes or short assessments, and we use Proctorio for our real exams. So we have two systems now, not just one. So I'm sorry I lied, y'all. This session, as you all know by now, you should know, I took health assessment part one and patho. So let's talk about health assessment first. Because I am asked this question literally every day, like on a regular basis about how Chamberlain divides up their classes and stuff. Yes, there are two parts to health assessment at Chamberlain. There's health assessment one and health assessment two. They are the same class, I guess, it's just in a series. Just like at Chamberlain, they also do their anatomy and physiology in four parts. It's just how they decide to do it. I don't know. I'm not the administrator. I don't know why they chose to do what they do. I just know that I'm taking the class, okay? It's divided in two parts. Please stop asking me. Y'all not gonna stop asking me and it's okay because I'm gonna still answer. In part one, we cover communication, the interviewing process, nursing process, data collection, documentation, privacy, health history, cultural considerations, care and comfort, pain assessment, vital signs, hair, nail, skin, neck, throat, mouth, face, hair, ears, eyes, respiratory system, cardiac system, and assessment techniques for those, and assessment techniques in general. So, you know, the, the inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation stuff. We we did all of that. that. I'm sorry that the light is really like, the sun just need to chill, my G. Just chill for a little bit. Obviously, that's not all the body systems. There are more systems that we will learn about, but for the first part of health assessment, those are the ones that were, that were focused on. Also, because of the, the two part divide of health assessment for our large final project, which is the head to chest or the head to toe, as people know it as, we only did, you know, to the chest part. So we did the systems that were all up here and then, you know, respiratory and then cardiac. So with health assessment part one now being done, I'm very excited. I will say that this, this session in general was very intensive. Putting together health assessment and patho together was a lot. And a lot of times the information that we learned in one class did not overlap with the next class and I was kind of hoping that it would so that it would be easier to kind of manage studying and stuff but nah it was just you know they were just not in sync and then at the same time because you know this is an accelerated program so with it being eight weeks long we had an assessment we had two assessments every week so on one day we would have health assessment quiz and then the next day it would be pathophysiology examination. Then the next week it would be health assessment examination, pathophysiology quiz. Then the next week it was just like on a flip, 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 flip for weeks one, two, three, four. I think week five was the first week where we only had one quiz. Then week six it was back to business as usual. So you really had no time to like not be on your P's and Q's. You didn't have any time to not be focused and um with the shits basically like you had to be on top of your work and your assignments i am an avid procrastinator it is something that i've been my entire life i just work really well under that kind of pressure i guess i don't know but that is that would not have worked this session honestly it would not have worked and there were a lot of things too in my personal life that kept popping up that would have really made me procrastinating like it would have ruined my whole 
session like I would probably have to have withdrawn because oh child I don't even think I told you I had corona yeah we had the we had the rona we had the rona for so you know we was out of commission for two and a half weeks to mention I also moved babe transferred he switched jobs twice so like there's a lot that's been happening and I just had to keep it together to make sure I got through this session okay and I did now as far as health assessment lecture went I had a very great professor if you are at the Atlanta campus you probably will not have her because she did resign to finish up her uh, doctorate her DMP so she's no longer teaching but she was really great and she really went into a lot of detail explaining concepts in lecture so there was a good and bad to that the good was that I honestly have I did not read the textbook one time in health assessment and I maintained an A minus the entirety of my session I might have read the textbook one time when we have to do exam remediation I think one thing to always remember while you're in nursing school is that the name of the game is really application. You can know the basis, but you really gotta know how to apply it in different situations. Because just because you know that hypertension means that your blood pressure is high, they're not gonna give you a question that says, what is the word for when blood pressure is high? They're gonna say, Bill arrived at the hospital with shortness of breath, dizzy spells, patches of light, and you know, so and so and so what could be his diagnosis or you know his last three readings were 180 over 120 what could be his diagnosis you know what I'm saying like they're gonna give you scenarios and details of um, of a potential problem and you have to be able to put it together and say okay I know what the basis of hypertension is so that sounds like it can match up you know what I mean so it's more about application less about just knowing definitions and I always say that but yeah so with health assessment my professor was very detailed the bad side was in lecture I could barely keep up I'm sitting there taking notes on the PowerPoint to what she's saying I'm typing I'm writing I'm typing I'm writing I could not keep up I could not keep up with her and even after I we had lecture I would have to go back and watch the lecture again still miss things and watch it a third time but honestly that repetition of repeating lectures really did help to stick in the basic concepts that i needed to be able to succeed in, in the course anyway a few people were asking me like what exactly the purpose of health assessment is and it really is just what the name sounds like it's when you are in practice what we do as nurses we assess our our clients we assess our patients to see if you know they're well depending on your specific specialty of course if you're assessing if they're well if you're in an emergency like an ER then you're assessing you know what acute symptoms they're having what acute issues they're having that need to be addressed you're prioritizing okay this patient is having an airway breathing or circulation problem so they're before the patient over there who stubbed their toe you know what I mean so it's like these are different things that you're just, you're just going to be doing on a regular consistent basis in practice so that's really all this class is is an introduction to that obviously you're going to get more into that when you um, begin clinicals and stuff because then you can put all of this into practice so this stuff is not going to leave you like you might have just barreled through it but it's not going to leave you you're going to need to do it in the future so you just keep all this information with you i had a health assessment for one day from 7 a.m to 10 30 a.m and then for that and for for health assessment there is a lab component but for the actual class you do not have to be in uniform you can be in anything you want just as long as you presentable right and then from 11, sorry, from 10.30 to, okay, I had health assessment from 7 to 10. Then I had health assessment lab from 10.30 to 12.30. So for the lab, you had to be in uniform and you had to be compliant, which means hair up and back off of your shoulders, no jewelry, um, no nails, no nail polish, the nails cut short, no lashes, no um heavy makeup none of that kind of stuff right and depending on how serious your instructor is i know some instructors had their students hold up their shoes you had to wear the white shoes you have to have the right watch can't be a smart watch you had to have your stethoscope you had to have your pen light all of this stuff right just to be compliant for lab but that's just for the lab part not for the classroom part now as far as lab goes i'm gonna be honest it was a little bit of a waste of time. I could have used those two hours studying for more important things or sleeping, but it is what it is. You gotta, you know, you gotta do what the degree requires so you can get to your goals. I just didn't, it, I just didn't get the point, if I'm being honest. So that was health assessment, I guess, in a nutshell. 
I did take my final a couple days ago on Tuesday, which is a different day than my actual class. So make note of that if you have kids or you work a full-time job, you might have your final on a different day than what you actually prepare your classes for. So you might have to take that date, get that date um, requested off. But I took my final and it was not that bad. And we got, the, I literally got my grade back like, I think like three or four hours after I took the final. It knocked my A minus down to a B plus. And I had an A minus the entire session. So that's annoying. But whatever, we out here, we passed. I'm not trying to get straight A's. I'm just trying to get my degree. On to patho. Pathophysiology is a course that I really enjoy. I would call myself like a scientist by nature. I really enjoy figuring out how things work and why they work, how they work, and how systems work together or don't work together. I, I really enjoy that kind of stuff. So pathophysiology is really like that class for me. It's the science for me. So like I said, with health, health assessment, I didn't really read the textbook. I didn't read the textbook in patho either because we kind of talk through the body systems and why they did what they did. And it was easy for me then to be able to apply that to examinations and quizzes. My professor in patho, she has really bad reviews on Rate My Professor, which is crazy because I really enjoyed her. I think she was a great professor and she's such a sweet lady. Like I, I actually would love to like hang out with her in office hours or something. She's just really silly and stuff. Um, she has a really interesting background as well as far as what she did before she was a nurse. So yeah, I don't know how she came to get the grades she did in Rate My Professor because I'm doing fine in her class. and. I think other students I've talked to, they haven't had too much of an issue with her. And she's one of the only professors that I've had that has given me like detailed study guides. So that's been pretty cool also. I got a study guide for my final. I, ain't, I don't know, know the last time that's happened to me. So I appreciate her, okay? I have a video that I was supposed to post a while ago about how I study for patho and health assessment. But honestly, I will sit here and talk myself through scenarios and the most ratchet way, but that's how just that is just how I am able to remember and retain these different scenarios. Because I can't, you know, the little textbook definitions and stuff, that's corny. Anybody remember that? So I see, you know, I get a definition and I'm like, okay, the definition of hyponatremia is when there is excess sodium in the body, right? Okay, so my girl, natremia was being real hype. Why was Natremia invited? Nobody invited Natremia to the club, so how does she get in there? You know, I just sit there and I create I create these long stories, like really hilarious to me stories. But when I'm sitting here on the test and I'm like, dang, is it hyperphosphatemia? Is it hyperkalemia? Is it hypernatremia? And I can't remember what it is. I start going through these stories in my head and I'm like, Nah, it was that girl. It was that girl, Natremia. Natremia, ain't nobody invited her to the party. She was the one who was being hyper, and I just and it just comes to me just like that on a test. So but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna post that video that I have about how I study for health assessment in patho. I liked patho more than I like health assessment, but that's just my general preference. Um, I had patho for two days in the week, Wednesday and Friday, from 12 from nine to 12, so six hours a week for patho and five hours a week for health, health assessment. The other thing too, I guess, that was really helpful for me in succeeding in this, in this session has been my classmates. I shout y'all out every recap because y'all really are a bomb. Y'all really are it. And I don't know what y'all doing this weekend, but we need to go ahead and get some drinks because we don't have class for five whole days, six days for some of us. We might as well, uh, celebrate making it this far in the in the program my classmates have been everything we have a few like golden star people I call them who you know whenever we get a little whenever we get the study guide and stuff they are the first ones filling it in and shooting it to all of us or if we missed the or if a concept was misconstrued in class they're the first one sending up sending a mass message to the group me like hey y'all i don't know if you got to chapter 12 yet but when the professor said so and so and so she actually meant this and da -da -da, and, and it's you know like they really out here making everybody succeed and i love that i don't think i've ran into anybody with a bad bone in their body in my class nobody has been um snarky or just you know you know how people are just really competitive and don't want to share information no that is not the case here we are all out here just trying to succeed or whatever and it's amazing 
That was my recap for health assessment part one and pathophysiology at Chamberlain University. If you guys have any questions, do comment down below. Like I said, all in all, it was a very, it was a very trying session just because of my personal issues. But as far as the actual class and content goes, it was fine. It was really not anything that's not doable. So don't be scared. I know a lot of people have been messaging me that they're kind of scared or nervous for Path or Health Assessment. Don't, don't feel nervous. Just actually feel excited. For me, this, this is the first session where you begin to feel like a real like nurse, a real nursing student, you know? Because you're learning terminology that you might have never heard before if you're not in the field already. And you're learning how to, like you're saying things, you're rolling it off your tongue. So you just kind of feel kind of cool. You feel kind of, you know, educated or whatever. So yeah, just really absorb it, soak it up, enjoy it, and have a good time with it. Yeah, I do with YouTube. So this is a part two to the video that I already recorded. But there's a couple of things that I realized that I forgot to say in my initial review. In the assignment book, there's this thing called ILAs, which I've talked about before in my previous videos. But apparently the ILAs are not required. They're just something that's mandated by nationals, I guess. And they are in the grade book, but they're not required to be done. Now, because I'm a person who likes to see everything checked off and it kind of bothers me, I don't know if it's OCD or what, I, I gotta see stuff checked off. I ended up completing those assignments anyway, even though they weren't required. Also, the other really big thing about this session, this session was full of threats. Either the deans or people who do compliance, mostly people who do compliance, just st straight threatening us the whole session to make sure we get our fingerprinting or get our flu shot, do this, do that, make sure we're compliant. and. You know, we're gonna drop you from your classes if you're not compliant. It was a bunch of threats. When I tell you like we were getting threatened like every day, I probably got an email. I probably, I'm still getting emails cause I'm not compliant yet, but I'm working on it. But I get emails like every day saying that I need to get these things done. And it's like, child, I know, like, come on, I know. Don't you think I want to go to clinical? Like, I know, please, I know. And now that I've started my second session, it's, I just finished my first week of the second, of the, of the November session. And the threats don't stop, honey. The threats don't stop. In fact, they may get worse. I, I just need to rant about that on a separate video. I made a fingerprinting appointment and honey, because of the construction or whatever it is they're doing on campus, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know where the heck I was going. The directions were horrible. The officers like there, they just didn't know what to tell me. They were very confused. So my appointment was at 1.30 to get my fingerprints done and I arrived at 125 or so 120 but because i was lost i was literally circling there's no detour instructions for parking i was in building d i needed to get to building a i'm walking through building d the, the guard sending me around the corner okay i get to building c sending me down the street around the corner through the valley up the hill around the bend and the person who runs the fingerprinting said that i gotta be scheduled because i'm late I'm past the five minute threshold. I said, oh, that's okay. So I will say if you're able to get your compliance documentation in like the first day or week of your time at Chamberlain, please do. Do not waste any time dealing with the compliance foolishness because it will give you a headache and make you have an attitude like I clearly do. So I was explaining how Chamberlain breaks apart, breaks apart their classes. So there's like health assessment part one and two apparently even though we had finished health assessment part one health assessment part two is going to have a cumulative final including all the info from part one so that's kind of bullshit but you know whatever so i go and to close this video i want to give a special shout out to all of my new jamaican subscribers like i love you guys wagwan medea how are you doing i hope you're all right don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a friend. Share it with somebody who you think would enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Look more.